Hey everybody, Barry here again. First off, I promise I am gonna shave my beard soon. It's getting on my nerves too. Anyway, today I'm gonna get ready and start cleaning up this block because I need to start make it look good, get it all painted up and clean. Spray some brake cleaner down through here. I'm not gonna take the crank out yet. I might just kind of clean up the tops of the pistons and blow all the garbage out of it. Still not completely sure if I'm gonna be doing a Gen 4 or Gen 3, but it seems like it's gonna be a little bit difficult for me to change it over, so we'll see what happens. But let's get down with the wire brush and clean this bad boy up. Considering the mess I just made, probably gonna pull the crank out anyway. Wash it all down inside nice. I don't really think I got much in here because I'm only scraping it off with a rag and stuff, but it's nice to be sure. I do have a Gen 3 crank, and I've been thinking it'd be a lot easier for me to buy the 1X cam gear to go up here with the front cover and just extend my cam gear or my cam sensor harness than it would be to switch out my whole operating system. So, let's continue on. Get this nice and clean so I can have it painted soon. Quick update. I found my Gen 3 crank that I had in my garage last night. And when I say found, I mean I actually had to dig for it because it's a state. So anyway, I'm going to pull the pistons and the crank out of this. I'm going to gap the rings because I'm not going through that mistake again. Just throw in the Gen 3 crank. And I ordered my timing kit today that'll be in uh, next week this is Chloe's 4-9205s it's got the 1x cam gear now it comes with tensioner or a guide or whatever it is and a new crank sprocket the chain so that's all nice but really I only needed this so got that ordered this is really nice that only come in the 05 and 06 uh, LS2 I think in like the Pontiac GTO so it's kind of hard to find but Chloe's makes it and SA gear makes it and stuff so I ordered that so let's go ahead and pull the bottom end apart on this. Pistons are all out relatively clean down in here the bearings look really good no damage or anything on them pistons are quite black but even the skirts aren't really worn a lot I've seen some of them where there was none of the black coating left on them at all now they are quite dirty so I'll probably clean them up a little bit soak them soak them for a night in some one wash or something like that let's get this crank out of the way Here we go. Block is completely empty. Going to take these bearings and lay them with each cap. All the caps are in line the way they're going to go. Rear cover. 
all the pistons laid out. And I think I'm just, it's just as well for me to power wash this block. Usually that's what I always do. Soak it down really good with some clean flow engine degreaser. That's wicked stuff. And then power wash it a couple times. This will be whistle clean inside. It's actually not bad at all. It's just some darkness from oil being slung around and stuff, but. Yep. This is what we have. Gonna get ready and pull the crank out of the other engine this evening and get ready to bolt it back together. I'm gonna start at the pistons first. First thing I like to do is take them all apart, take the rings off, take the wrist pins out. These are gonna be really easy because they're Gen 4 and they're C-clip style. So let's just pop C-clip out, pull the pin, piston is separated. No press, no heat, no freezing, no fooling around. Then put them in soak. Make sure they're nice and clean, get all the carbon off of them. And then since I'm doing this over the winter, and I'm not doing another two, three day build like I normally do when I blow it up and run out of time, I'm gonna try my hand at balancing. So this is an old gram scale. And I'll just lay the piston on there. Measure all eight of them, see which one is the lightest and make all of them match. And I'll do the same thing with the wrist pins. If there's one pin that's a gram heavier, you can sort of uh, ream the inside of it a little bit here. Not on the outside, of course, because that's where the bearing and the piston is going to ride. Um, but you can calm these down. The rods, you're supposed to do big end and small end, but I don't really have a machine to do that. And maybe I'll look at some kind of a DIY thing that I can make, because it's not really difficult. It's just holding up one end of the rod and letting the other end hang, see what the weight is, and then the small end, same thing. And for the grinding, I'll be using something like this here. A little bit aggressive, but it'll make really quick work. Here we go, got it to focus. It's a carbide bit. So for the aluminum, it'll make really quick work. For the rods, I think you can sort of grind some out down and under here, that kind of thing, a little bit off the edges, but I gotta do some more research. I don't wanna make any weak parts or anything like that, but let's get some disassembly. I'm headed up to the shop again, but look how beautiful this looks. I don't even like snow, but Before I go at this, you know I gotta do some drifty boys. I just found a tray that I used last time I built one of these engines. So I'll go and pull the bearings off in sets. Doesn't really matter what order they're in because they're not probably not gonna back on the same rods anyway, but who cares? So I'll put them in as pairs, like these two will stay together, you know. So let's take these apart. I'm gonna take apart the pistons in tonight's video and put them in soak. And then next time I'm going to start the balancing process because I want it to be nice and clean. I don't want to have carbon or oil built up causing extra weight and my numbers will be all off. I like to start with a nice clean slate. So First step that I like to do is pull the clip out. And be careful, hold your finger over this, because if not, it'll fly into the atmosphere and then NASA owns it. So grab a small screwdriver, something like this. Flat is better, but I just can't put my hands on one at the moment. Just kind of pry in behind it in this slot here. It's, it's starting to come out of the groove. And here we go. So we'll lay that aside over here. Then you can turn it over. Don't go crazy with it. Just gotta give it little taps. Make it a longer 
It out. Also a good idea before I take this apart and mess it up is note the orientation of the piston to the rod and make a mark like here we go so here the dot is facing away from the dot on top of the piston I just checked and all the pistons are like that so Make sure that we put them back on the correct way. A lot of pistons make a difference because the wrist pin is offset to one side or the other. And I'm not quite sure about these LS, but I don't want to put them on backwards. So here we go. There we have it separated. We can see our wrist pin bushing in here. Looks like it's in good shape. The oil passages aren't blocked or anything. So we'll lay that one over here. And here we can see our piston. This is actually one of the cleaner ones I've seen. I've seen some taken apart that you couldn't even see these casting marks. It was completely filled with oil and crud. And we can see that all of our rings are nice and free. Everything turns over nice. Put our pin over here. Oh, and here's our wrist pin. Real solid. Nice heavy duty. Machined really nice. No wear on it. So let's go now and take apart our, take the rings off. So I like to hook one side in here and just lift it up over the piston like this. And then instead of pulling straight up, sort of rotate the piston ring around the top of the piston and just pull it back this way. That's our top compression ring. There we do, here we are. Do the same with this one. This one can be a little bit trickier, but just don't pry it. Just rotate it around, pull it off. It's our second compression ring. And now the oil rings, the top and bottom rings have to come off before this zigzag oil ring has, can come out because it's got a shoulder on the back that this actually sits into. So we'll pull those off the same way. They're a lot more flexible. So... There we go. There's our top oil. Bottom oil ring. And then our zigzaggy oil ring. There we go. And that's all as to taking apart one of these pistons. One thing is always good to remember is label everything. So, top. Bottom, top, oil, middle, bottom, oil. So label them clearly. When you look in the box and see rings, well, obviously you're gonna know that's the top, or, you know, compression ring, bottom compression ring, top oil, middle oil, bottom oil, easy. These trays are really, really cool. I work at CarQuest here and we got lots of these old trays that we don't use anymore. So it's nice to have them. So here we go. Clearly organized. Don't have our rings mixed up. Won't be putting anything on backwards. Here you have it, folks. All taken apart, nice and organized. Rings, all nice and organized. I put the wrist pin clips in the back. Rods. I'm going to put them in soak now, and that'll be it.
I can already tell this is gonna be kind of a fun series. I can't wait to get this engine really on the road. Get it, you know, get the parts in, get the LS7 cam in it. Pistons all cleaned up and balanced. I have balanced pistons before, but I kind of ran out of time, so I had to do another setup, just put a different set of pistons in it, throw it together, because I'm steady blowing rat rod. I blew it up three times last year. I'd build engine in like two, three days, throw it in, in order to get back forth to work, because it's my daily driver in the summer. So it's nice to be able to breathe and just take my time and build the engine, clean it up really nice, put good parts in it. So we're gonna go ahead, put these in soak, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for watching. Man, this gun wash is nasty. Bloop.